Hello everyone, my name is Pankaj and on behalf of Engineers Institute of India, I will be presenting some gate solutions to you. The first question that is the ammonia oxidation process, the ammonia oxidation process occurs over a catalyst by the following reaction that is 4 times of ammonia reacts with 5 times of oxygen to produce 6 moles of water and 4 moles of nitrogen oxide. In this process the air is supplied such that oxygen is 20% in excess. See, according to stoichiometry, we require some amount of oxygen. But for the safety purposes, so that we can have the total reaction, an air or what oxygen is usually supplied in excess to that of the theoretical amount. And that is the same thing which is being done over here. That is, oxygen is supplied in 20% of the excess than that of the complete conversion the, theoretically. In this case, we have to find out the mole fraction of oxygen in the inlet mixture that is nitro, uh, ammonia and air mixture. Okay, so we are going to find it out. For doing such kind of problems, first you need to write down the, the reaction itself. Then according to stoichiometry, you have to find out how many moles of what reactant is reacting to produce how many moles of what product. Okay. Okay, the, this is the thing that we have to find out. That is, what is the stoichiometry and how are the moles converting into products. Now, writing down the stoichiometry, 4 times of NH3 plus 5 times of O2 gives 6 times of H2O plus 4 times of NO. Now, from the stoichiometry, we can see that 4 moles of ammonia react with 5 mole of oxygen all right now it is said that that we have supplied oxygen in 20 percent of the excess so let's take four moles as the initial basis so that we have the initial analysis very easy the so four moles of ns3 is taken as our basis so according to stoichiometry five moles of oxygen should be supplied to it but we supplied 20 percent in excess it means the oxygen which is supplied in the form of air is equal to 1.2 into the O2 theoretically required which is our 5. So it will become 1.2 into 5 is equal to 6 moles. Hence we have supplied 6 moles of oxygen for reacting with ammonia. Now we have to find out how much is this oxygen in the feed mixture. The feed contains ammonia and air. The air composition is that it contains 21 mole percent of oxygen and 79 mole percent of nitrogen. Hence by again this stoichiometry and the analysis we are going to find out how much is the net fraction of O2 in the feed mixture. Now the zero, 1 mole of air contains 0.21 mole of oxygen or we can say that 0.21 mole of oxygen is contained in 1 mole of air. Okay, This is stoichiometry telling us but how many moles are given to us? 6 moles. Hence the 6 moles of oxygen is contained in 1 divided by 0.21 into 6 which is equal to 28.57 mole of air. So, this many moles of air contains 6 moles of oxygen which are supplied to the reaction mixture. So, in our reaction mixture, we took the 4 moles of ammonia as basis. So, these were the number of moles of ammonia and this is the number of moles of air. So, total number of moles is equal to number of moles of air plus number of moles of ammonia NH3 which comes out to be 28.57 plus 4 is equal to 32.57. So this is the total number of moles which are fed to the reaction mixture. Now we have to find out the fraction of oxygen in it, the fraction of oxygen. So fraction of oxygen which will equal to the 6 moles of oxygen which is contained in total moles of air and ammonia mixture which comes out to be 0.18. 4-2.
So this is the answer for this question. Now moving on to the next question. Yeah, this is a mechanical operations question. In this question, it is said that in a roll crusher, we are having a roll crusher. What is a roll crusher? A roll crusher is the size reduction equipment which utilizes the rolling action of rolls to reduce the size of the materials, which are usually solids such as rocks. We have to reduce the size of rocks to smaller pieces. For those, we use the crushers. In this case, what do we have? We have rolls like this and like this. So these two rolls are analogous to our uh, sugarcane juice machine. The two rolls, they are rotating in the opposite directions. Okay. And the feed, the feed is given from the top. Let's take feed as the black color. So this is the feed. Okay. So it is said that we have roll crushers. This is a type of roll crushers. Okay. The diameter of rolls is one meter each. It means all both the rolls they have the diameter of one meter. So this is the diameter of roll. As let's take it d1, which is equal to one meter. Now they are set in such a manner that minimum clearance, the minimum clearance. What is this minimum clearance? It is the minimum distance between the two rolls. The, the two rolls which are used for reducing the size, the minimum distance that is possible between these two rolls is known as the minimum clearance. Now this is given to us that minimum clearance between crushing surfaces is 15 mm. Let's take it as, uh, let's take the diameter, this one as the D3, which is equal to 15 mm. Okay, now if the angle of nip is 31 degree, what is this angle of nip? I have made this as the our object that is inlet. It is in contact with both the crushers, with both the rolls. Okay, so at the tangent, let's make the tangents at the two points of contact. This angle, this theta angle is known as the angle of nip. Theta is equal to angle of nip. That is the angle made by tangents at the point of interface of a um, point of contacting of the body and the rolls. That is known as the angle of nip, which is given to us as the 31 degree. Now we have to find out the maximum diameter of the particle in mm which can be crushed. So this is the particle and we have to find out the diameter of this particle. Let's take it as the D2. So in the question, we have to find out what is D2. Now, how to proceed with it? This is a very simple problem, which we can proceed by taking the concepts of mathematics. This angle is theta. So I have bisected this angle and this angle will become theta by two theta by 2. Now see, there is also one thing that this radius at this point, when I connected these points, this is the line joining the two centers, the center of the roll as well as the center of the particle. Now this line is perpendicular to this line. Similarly, we will have a line which is perpendicular to this line. Now from the geometry of angles or we can say that from the concept of angles we know that the angle between two set of perpendicular lines is same so it will also be equal to theta by 2 so we got to know that this angle is also theta by 2 now making the use of trigonometric properties we can find out the value of d2 now how will we do it let's take green color for it this one was the d1 so this length is d1 by 2. So this, if this is d3, this length is d3 by 2. So the whole base of this triangle is d1 by 2 plus d3 by 2. It becomes d1 by 2 plus d3 by 2. d3 by 2. Okay. Now similarly, this hypotenuse, its angle is, this is again d1 by 2. And this one is d2 by so the hypotenuse will become d1 by 2 plus d2 by 2. Now just use the trigonometric properties that is 
the cos of angle the cos of angle theta by 2 is equal to base upon hypotenuse which is equal to d1 by 2 plus d3 by 2 upon d1 by 2 plus d2 by 2 so this is the thermodynamic property which we are going to use so it will become the cos of angle 31 by 2 is equal to multiplying both sides with 2 denominator and numerator it becomes d1 plus d3 upon d1 plus d2 now just put the values and get the answer so on putting the values here it is given to us the angle theta 1 31 so cos of angle 31 by 2 comes out to be 0 0.964 which is equal to d1 so for analysis take any way of measuring see for i take the si units that is meter so d1 is equal to 1 meter d2 in changing into meter it becomes 0 0.015 meter so put the values it becomes 1 plus 0 0.015 upon 1 plus d2 okay so on analysis it becomes from here uh, 1 plus d2 by 2 is equal to 1.015 upon 0 0.964 hence d2 it comes out to be 0 0.052904 meter now since the answer is asked in mm so it comes out to be 52.904 mm so this is the maximum diameter of the particle which can be crushed in the roll crushers now moving on to the next question the next question is for from plant design and economics in this case in this question what is said it is said that in year 2005 the cost of a shell and tube heat exchanger with 68 meter square heat transfer area was rupees 12.6 lakhs okay so in year when 2005 when you purchased a shell and tube heat exchanger it its area was 68 meter square and which cost it to you rupees 12.6 lakhs now the chemical engineering index for the cost in 2005 was 509.4 and at this present suppose you have to buy the similar type of equipment right now at this point the index is 575.4 now based upon index of 0 0.6 for capacity scaling the present cost we have to find out of a similar heat exchanger having 100 meter square heat transfer area now here there are two things which are fixed number one is that using the previous data you have to calculate the value of the equipment which is similar to your previous equipment but which is purchased at this point of time that is the course the equipment that was purchased in 2005 has to be repurchased now that is 2018 so but see you see that equipments they lose their uh, their, their prices change with time suppose a uh, watch that you buy today it costs around 2000 so maybe two years back or ten years back it must have cost it must have a cost of fifteen hundred or maybe less okay that is known as the cost index that with time the cost of commodities increase which is given to us that with this factor the cost of commodities has increased now you have to estimate the cost which you have to bear for buying a similar equipment the second thing is tell to you that area the area is more than that of the previous heat exchanger now what do we know with this area as the area of heat exchanger increases its capacity increases because bigger the heat exchanger is more is the amount of fluid it is going to handle now we know that it is going to handle comparatively more amount of fluid so obviously it will have more surface area and it will cost a little bit more so you have to find out this present cost of this similar type of equipment that is shell and tube heat exchanger how are we going to produce proceed with it for proceeding with it we are going to use the cost index method now what is this cost index method the cost index method is the method of estimation of price of commodities taking into consideration the history of price that is when you know the price of a commodity in past 
using that data when you have to estimate in the present or at any time then that type of estimation is known as the cost index estimation now according to is this index the cost of commodity in x year upon cost of commodity in y year is equal to the ratio of the capacities in x year and y year raised to the power of factor n and the ratio of their indexes this is the formula now what are the values given to us here the capacity is given to us let x is equal to your 2005 year and y is your present year that is 2018 now capacity in 2018 and 2005 are given to us that is qx which is equal to 68 meter square now what is the capacity in present year qy it is given as the 100 meter square now what are the next thing that is index how much is the cost index it is given to us for the for the both years that is i of x is given as 509.4 similarly i of y is given as 575.4 just put the values and get the answer so let's put the values it becomes the cost in x upon cost in y here is equal to 68 upon 100 raised to the power n into 509.4 upon 575.4 now in the question itself it is told to us that index of 0.5 that is n is the index ratio which is given to us if it is not given to us you have to by default take it as 6 0.6 that is it is known as the 6 by 10th power law that is when the commodities are uh, purchased at different points of time using the different rates of different capacities then the ratio of their capacities they are raised to the power of n which is this ratio for taking into consideration the cost so put the values it becomes 0.68 raised for 0.6 into 509.4 upon 575.4 so from here it becomes cx or uh, your so cy is equal uh, just put the values cx upon cy is equal to 0.793 this is the value of 0.68 raised to the power 0.6 and this value comes out to be 0.8853 now cx is given to you as the 12.6 so So 12.6 upon CY is equal to 0.7024, the product of these two terms. So from here, the CY comes out to be 12.6 upon 0.7024, which is equal to 17.94 lakhs. Hence, the similar type of heat exchanger, the shell and tube heat exchanger, which you bought in 2005 for a price of 12.6 lakhs, is now costing. 17.94 lakhs because of two reasons number 1 due to increase in capacity and number 2 due to increase in index and this is it for today's lecture thank you for listening to me